In this video, I'm just going to quickly touch on some good conventions and standards you want to follow around file management and naming around certain features in Photoshop just to help you keep your documents organized so it's easier for you to work with them. Some of this is just file management basics. So when you create a new document, that's about saving it with names that make sense. So obviously when you open them back up, you know what you're working with, but it equally applies within Photoshop. Um, and especially when you're working with the layers panel over here, because you can see here, I've just started work on this document. And because it was a photo that's come out of my camera, it's loaded up with this layer name of underscore mg underscore one two two zero dot cr2 which is the actual file name off of the camera doesn't really make sense you want to get in the habit of keeping the layers panel organized so that you can read through these layers and kind of understand why each layer exists and i'll explain that um, why that's important in a sec as we add a few layers here and rename them rename them so first thing we're going to do is rename this layer so to do that if you double click on the layer you can see it pops in a kind of text box and then you can just call this whatever you want so i would call this something like original photo or base photo so i know this is the raw image out of the camera and it hasn't had anything done to it if you remember when we talked about non-destructive editing what i'm thinking here is i'll keep the original photo here i'm not going to do anything to it on this layer so that everything i then do in terms of effects and any further work is done with new layers on top of this one so again going back to the last video you will remember we added a black and white effect we used a hue saturation adjustment layer for that so if i go back and put that hue saturation adjustment layer on turn it into black and white we've got that effect back but if you look at the name of the layer, it says hue slash saturation one. Now it would make much more sense to rename this one again, double click and call it something like convert to black and white or black and white effect is probably better. You might want to do B and W. These are just things you can decide so that when you look at these layers, it kind of makes sense what's there. I'm just going to get rid of that one on the top so we don't get in trouble. And immediately when you're looking at these layers now, it kind of makes sense what each of these are. I could go in and add another one. So I'm going to add a new effect. This is called a gradient. So what this will do is add a gradient of any two colors we want. Uh, and indeed you can make those colors transparent as you can see is happening here. So it's going from sort of green and fully uh, visible to just transparent. I'll click OK. And I might want to call this something like green wash. So obviously it looks pretty terrible, but the point is we're adding layers and naming them as we go to keep things organized. Another thing you can do with the layers panel here is you can actually add colors onto them, which makes it a little bit easier to work with. I deal with a lot of documents that might have 250 layers in them, and it's much, much easier to kind of get a sense of which ones are which by giving them sort of color coding. So you can right click on the layers and you'll see there's these set of colors down the bottom. And so I might decide, right, everything that's an effect I'll label with orange. So I can do that for the gradient. I'll do that for the black and white effect. And so now I've got this kind of visual cue that certain layers have certain behaviors or groupings, which makes things a little bit easier to manage. So that's a little bit about organization within layers. The other thing you want to do is make sure you're giving your files good names. Now, by default, Photoshop documents are saved as PSD files, which literally means Photoshop document. That's different from other types of image files you may have heard of like JPEG, PNG, which I'll cover in a second. But those are files that are exactly the type you see on that are loaded on web pages and they're just the image 
All they contain is the data of the image. What they can't contain is information like these layers. So these layers are very, very specific to Photoshop, the settings you've got in them, any additional layers you add, text, etc. To have all those stored and be able to open back up and let you edit them non-destructively, you've got to save your document as a PSD. So that means this preserves all the work you've done it that preserves all the work you've done in photoshop so it's ready to work with uh, next time you want to open the document what that means is working with photoshop documents is almost always a sort of two stage or, or two file operation in that you're going to start with a psd file but then you're going to export or save the document as another type of image depending on what you want to do with it so if you were going to have a photo printed there are certain file types that are more suitable uh, to give to a printer than say if you wanted to save the image and have it published on instagram or the web in which case there are other types of files which are more suitable so we'll just step through a couple of these quickly now so obviously i've got the psd file open already that was just a case of me starting with a new document file new create and then by default, when I go to save a new document, you can see I've got file save as, it's gonna pop up in the current folder and it's selecting Photoshop as the default document type. So you can see there .psd is the, what you wanna make sure you've got selected when you start on a new document. Worst mistake you can make, and everyone makes it once, is to start on something, add a few layers, go and save it, and find out that you actually had something like JPEG selected, which will of course destroy all your layers and then they're gone. You can't get them back uh, when you go to open the document again. So new document, you start as PSD, like the one I have here. And then once it's open, any changes I make, like taking that horrid green effect off, if I click save, it's just gonna update the PSD with the changes. Uh, this can take a while if you end up working on big photos, lots of layers, that kind of thing. Uh, these files can get pretty big. So saving like it's doing here can take a little bit of time. That's that save. Now what I might wanna do is save this as a JPEG so I can take it to a printer's. So Photoshop actually has lots and lots of different ways to export images. So I can do it through the Save As dialog like we just saw. There's also sort of a whole bunch of different options under Export. I don't actually understand why they have so many. There's slight different variances to how all of these work and some have certain features, others don't. Again, complex stuff we'll get into later. For the time being, I'm just gonna use the normal Save As come in here. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is choose JPEG as the file type. By default, what it's doing is it's saying, well, if you're gonna save this as a JPEG, we're assuming you wanna use the same file name that you had for the PSD. So that will mean I have this file name, 01 slash hero dot PSD in the same folder as this new file, which will be 01hero.jpg. But of course I could come in and change this to something else, call it JPEG export, whatever I want. doesn't really matter. But I prefer to keep the export file names, in this case JPEG, the same as the PSD names, so I know what they are. There's a couple of other settings down here, like color profiles. Again, we don't need to worry about too much at the moment. And by going through this option, what will happen is I'll click save, and then we get this dialog open, which is asking how do you want your JPEG save? And essentially what you can do with JPEG files is make them smaller by reducing the image quality, uh, depending on how much you wanna compress them. So JPEG is an algorithm that'll, that can make image files really, really small, but the more you kind of dial down this setting here, the worse the image is gonna look. Photos tend to hold up pretty well, so you can do this quiet, you know, a five or six wouldn't look too bad on a photo, but I'd certainly never do that for something I was gonna do professionally if I wanted to get a photo printed. So normally I keep this pretty high, 11, sometimes even 12. So maybe we'll go 10 for this. Don't worry about these other options. Click okay, 
and that's gonna save this image out as a JPEG. So when I go into the folder this is uh, stored in, I'm gonna find that JPEG file alongside the PSD. Now I've done that, you'll see it's actually returned to the PSD file. So Photoshop is assuming we always wanna work with the PSD files. It's not changed it over to the JPEG file. But just be careful because sometimes there's some scenarios where that might happen. So keep an eye up here with your file name and make sure you are still working on the PSD file and file and not a JPEG or a PNG or another type of file. Um, it'll pretty much be given away by the fact that you won't see any of the uh, layers over here in the layer files. So that's a basic overview of file management. So it's covering keeping your layers nice and well named. You've got the color coding option there. And then same with your files, keep those well named. Um, make sure you understand whether you're working on a PSD file or whether you're working on an exported image like a JPEG or PNG. If you're stuck, make sure you take a backup of, the, of your work. Make sure you don't ever save over the top of something if you don't know what it is. You can always save with a different file name, um, not lose any work, and you should be set. Head to toyshooter.com for more tutorials, resources, and help with Photoshop compositing. You can also subscribe to my free newsletter by visiting shoot.toys in your browser or clicking on the link on screen. You can also follow my work on Instagram at instagram.com slash shoot.toys. Subscribe to the channel to watch a special subscriber-only video, which you'll find on my channel page after subscribing. Lastly, you'll find links to all the places I've just mentioned in the description for this video below.